Babin, his wife, Prophetess Cookie, and Genesis, the King's Church family. We welcome you, and we trust God that whatever it is that's in your heart today, that God will hear and God always answers. God hears and he always answers. God hears and he always answers. Yes. It might not be what you want, but he always answers. Yes. So Father, we just praise you today. We thank you that you are faithful. Yes. That you are a faithful Father. Yes. You are a faithful Lord. We thank you this morning for your faithfulness. Yes. And even times when we were not faithful, you've always been faithful. Always been faithful and that you always are faithful to your word and that you said that you're watching over your word to perform it and to perfect it to the day that Jesus returns and you also told us that your word will not return to us void that it will accomplish what it was set out to do so father we thank you for your word today we thank you for your word today, Lord. And that your weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Mighty.
Hallelujah. Let's welcome the prophet Gabriel Babbitt. Come on. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Testimonies from our love feast and our men's meeting, and what God's been doing. Yeah. And, um, just everyone open your hearts. Open your hearts, open your ears, open your spirits. But listen, those that, for men and women, the men's meeting teaches you how to be a man and how to be a man of God. That's what the men's meeting teaches you. The right. men's meeting teaches you a more intimate relationship and a one-on-one -on -one time with our, with our bishop, with our apostle, where he pours things out that he does not give from the pulpit. I'm going to say that again. There are things that are given in the men's meeting from the apostle that are not given from the pulpit. So the men that mi miss the men's meeting, you're missing God. And it's the same thing with the, and we, the men, we meet once a week. And the women, they meet once a month. If you're a woman and you want to learn how to be a woman of God, if you want to learn how to be a mother of Israel, if you want to learn how to have a more intimate relationship as a woman of God, then you have to go and be with the women of God. You have to spend time with the women of God. If, you want, if you're a woman and you want a husband, then you need to go learn from mothers. You need to go learn from my mother how to be a wife, how to be a mother, how to be a student, how to be a prayer intercessor. All those things you will learn from my mother and Diana when you go to the meetings. Yeah. And if you're missing those meetings, you're missing key things from God. Coming to church once or twice a week is not enough. That's not enough. Listen, church has to be a lifestyle. Church has to be a lifestyle. Church is not just Sunday and Thursday. That's not church. Church is every day. And we're going to get into that a little bit. And I uh, want you to, who you want first, Dad? Okay. Jackie, you're up first. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> sorry. What I learned from the women's meeting was um, right on point. Miss Diana and Prophetess Cookie are always on point um, <laughs> with everything. Um, but what stood out to me was um, it, what we were talking about building your home and who you are allowing to minister to you or who you allow to build your house. Who is helping you build your house? Who is... Um, Speaking into your language. Yeah. And who, so who are you allowing? And um, being sensitive to the spirit, and um, I shared with Miss Diana and Prophetess and the women, was sometimes is if you're sensitive to people or the spirit, is if you, I, I share that sometimes if I'm speaking to someone, my head just starts pounding or my ear just starts pulsating so it's like okay it's time to get off the phone bye you know what I mean so um, it was just important that we we're talking about 30 fold and 60 fold and 100 fold and um, 30 fold is those hidden missers that come to church and you know hey hi bye type of thing and then the 60 folders where um, I no longer want to be is that we're busy in the church or we we come and we play the part and we're playing the role in, and then the, the hundredfold is the ones that are in the word and that live by the word. So, and it's, it's building your house on a rock and not on sand. So then we have the, you know, the people that build their house on sand is the 30 folders. And the people that build their house on rocks are the hundred folders. So I don't want to build my house on clay, which is just pretend rock that eventually will fall apart or disintegrate. So... I no longer want to be a uh, 60 fold, I want to be a hundred, a hundred fold and it was kind of like an eye opener and what we need to do and how I need to, how I need to, since I am a single mother, how I need to be the one that's that rock for Jasmine and for my home and make sure that my home is, is, is on a rock. So I'm 
shooting for a hundredfold, I am a hundredfold. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'd like to thank Bishop and Pompidus for allowing me to come up here to share what I got from the Love Feast. And like Jackie said, what we learned yesterday at the Love Feast was learning how to build our house or our home. And Diana gave us a definition of what a house is and what it means to build. So basically a house, it's a place or a structure of safety and security. A place where you go to for peace, for joy, yeah. a place where you go to lay your head down to rest. Whoa. And it's a place where your family lives, whether it's your immediate family, family by blood, or family in Christ. Yeah. And she also told us <clears throat> the definition of what it means to build. And it's to make something by putting together pieces with the right tools and materials and it's according to a systematic plan. So whether it's referring to literal, your literal home, or you as a person, or your house of God, it's our systematic plan is the Word, which yes. is our blueprint. Yes. Your Bible, it has every answer to every possible issue, concern, or problem you may ever have. Before you, whether you're going through it at the moment or before it even comes to you, it has every single answer. So when you're building something, it's you're forming and you're molding a structure and that's what God has continued to do with us as women and even to the men as well. He's continuing to mold and shape us every single day to become a strong pillar of the house. So that with that it includes praying every day, being in your word constantly every day and also being faithful to God and serving God in the church. Both God and the church because you can't have God without the church and you can't have church without God. that we got uh, she was from Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 and it's like Jack said it talks about two different houses one that's built on sand and one that's built on the rock which is Jesus and the word yeah. and it says that when the winds the rains and the floods come which represents all the problems that come that we encounter right. in life right. when they come the house that's built on sand is going to fall right. it's going to fall through all that right. but a house that's built on the rock on the word yeah. it, the winds can beat on that house it could try to wipe it out but it's going to stand firm and strong yeah. it's going to stand firm because it was built on the word so and sorry I'm just gonna go ahead. I got a lot of stuff so so a lot of times when trials come like Bishop said on Thursday when are you going to be able to persevere when the trials come yeah a lot of times when things happen we're good we're like a lot of times we're stuck here we're like man how am I going to get out of this one what am I going to do I don't know what I'm going to do like I'm, I'm in a rut so but he tells us the Bible says we gotta look for the victory in it and not get stuck on the problem. So we gotta look for the victory. We gotta ask ourselves, renew our minds to thinking, what is it that God's trying to show me? What is it that Jesus wants me to learn from this? What is the victory that He wants me to push through to get to the other side? What is it exactly that He's trying to show me? So, um, <laughs> and so. Uh, Jackie wants to read a verse. Sorry. The verse that stuck out to me was in Proverbs 24, 3. It says, Through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And then I went on and I read a little bit more. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. For for by wise counsel you will wage your own war, and will multi wait, sorry multitude of counselors there is safety. Yeah. So that goes along with who are you allowing to speak in your life? Who are you allowing to build help you build your home? So I thank God for the women that are sitting right there and Gabriel because always know how to cut. Very good with the word. <laughs> to touch up on that, so many of us don't realize how blessed and lucky we are to have a living apostle and a prophet in our midst every day. We say when we want help, we go to them, but then we ain't ready for the truth.